the SPAD SX111, or we will sh call it the SPAD 13, was a French biplane fighter aircraft of World War One, developed by the Société Pure l'Aviation et de Société de Vorici, which would be S for Society, P for Pure, A for l'Aviation, and E for de Vorici, so SPAD, so SPAD for short. From the early, highly successful, the highly SPAD, successful SPAD SV-11, which is the SPAD-10 or the SPAD-7, was the most capable fighters of the war and was actually the most produced fighter, being over 8,472 built, and even had the order for 10,000 more, but it was cancelled due to the armistice in late 1918. So the SPAD actually flew on April the 4th, with deliveries from the French Air Service starting in the next month. The new fighter was planned for an important role in the French plans for a fighter force, being expected to replace the very kind of obsolete SPAD SV-11. Well, it was few remaining newer port fighters as well in frontline service. Deliveries were much slower than expected, of course. However, with 764 delivered by the end of March 1918, compared with the planned 2230, the S, the SPAD 13, eventually was equipped virtually into every French fighter squadron, including the 74th Escadrilles, including the SPAD. Using the SPAD during the First World War, at the end of the war, plans were on the way to replace the SPAD 13 at that point with the fighters that would go beyond 300 miles per hour, including the Hispano Suzy F8, such as the New Port, the Leg, Nid 29, and the SPAD XX, and even the Southwift Dolphin. But the SPAD 13 remained in service with the French fighter force until 1923. Other Allied forces were quickly to adopt a new fighter as well, with the SPAD 13 equipped 15 and 16 models pursued by the American squadrons at the Armistice. Nearly half of the 893 pursued by the United States Air Service were still actually in service by 1920 after the war. It was exported, to, exported to Japan, Poland, even Czechoslovakia and the Soviet bloc. In the United States, some SPAD 13s actually were re-engined with 180 mile per hour right Hispano engines to improve the reliability and to prepare pilots for the new Thomas Moore MB3 fighter which new, which new SPAD type wings in its construction until 1922 was flown by some notable aces including the French pilot George Germani and Greenfork as well as by the Italian Francesco Barca and aces included from the United States would always be Eddie Rickenbacker, of course, with 26 confirmed kills, and Frank Luke. And I think they missed out Billy Bishop, but I think Billy Bishop would have flown both Spads and Soft with Camels because he was a Canadian, but he could have still flown some Spads, but I think they missed out Billy Bishop. And um, we're going to do the Lapierre Rockets quickly. So the Lapier rockets were essentially a cardboard tube filled with 200 grams of black powder with wooden Corneli heads attached by a piece of paper and some lining tape and it had a triangular knife blade inserted into the slot across an apex forming a spare point. So at the beginning we're already looking at um, basically firework timing rocket missiles in a sense. So. Basically, it was created by the Yers Lapion, that's where it gets the Lapion rockets from. The basic method of noose was that a rocket was fired from an electrical interrupter circuit inside the plane itself in the wings of the biplane by a cockpit switch. The switch would then launch the rockets, all of them consecutively. The rockets were generally flying at a range of 100 to 150 meters with the aircraft with a inclined dive angle of 45 degrees and a very steep dive straightened the trajectory and it had to be a very accurate attack so they're basically the Stuka dive bombers of 1914 to 1918. So the attacks were made in the direction and the length of mostly balloon busting against the wind so the pilot would fear 
So the pilot would aim via the already existing gun sights of the plane. However, sometimes it would not ignite and discharge each rocket uh, currently and immediately. And sometimes there were delay and slight variations from one rocket to another. Thus the pilot had to continue to hold the trigger or hold the target in the gun sights and the dive continued until the last rocket was discharged successfully. Although tests were successful in bringing down balloons and even bringing down some Zeppelins, even so far as the United Kingdom to purchase some for the Zeppelin race on England, the Lapion rockets were news by United Kingdom, Belgium, of course France, and even Germany got its hands on them, but by the time before the interrupt again, this is in 1914, before they, by 1918, they had trace around and incendiary bullets and hydrogen fill um, rockets, so by the end of this, the rockets, the gunpowder rockets were basically abandoned by 1918. But it's still a, a bit of good trivia history to have. So that's pretty much the air. So that is to show how much air the air war in the skies have advanced from pistols to basically homing rockets before their time and dive bomber tactics. So unlike the sea which had the U boat warfare, which is still pretty good. It is still a very technological leap. But let's compare that to four leaps to maybe two to three leaps two to three leaps for sea you had the convoys, you had the submarines and you had um, multiple um, aircraft carriers yes, aircraft carriers were the best technological um, sea thing to be ever made so I wouldn't say sea is basically ahead of everything but um, air, the air war was definitely yeah that's pretty much the air war, I don't know Oh. 